Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today, let's talk about bears. There's an awful lot of confusing information out there about bears and bear behavior. Here's an example. I'm putting this video on YouTube to show people um, how timid these animals really are. And see, that was a bluff charge. Bears get killed over this, and they always stop. Quad, 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 quad. So what's going on here? Why are these bears behaving so differently? I thought I'd put this video together to try and provide some insight about bears and why they behave differently in different situations. At the end of the video, I'll explain what's going on in those two first clips. By the way, that guy is okay. I should have shot him a long time ago. <laughs> Scare me, that guy. First, let's put uh, the risks into perspective. Bear attacks are very, very rare and fatalities are even more rare. You're actually more likely to be killed by a wasp or being hit by lightning than by a bear. But people die from bear attacks every year in North America and both grizzly bears and black bears kill people. Chance of a bear attack is really low, but the risks increase the more frequently you travel into the backcountry. I work in natural resources and I know a lot of people that spend a lot of time in remote areas. I know at least half a dozen people who've had encounters with predatory bears. Some of these folks have had to get away from the bear by going into a lake or they've discharged their bear spray and uh, one person I know was actually mauled quite badly and was severely injured and quite frankly she's lucky to be alive. Some of these folks have been interviewed by the media about their experience and that's been recorded so I'll put some links below to those stories if you're interested. My buddy Todd, who recently came on a canoe trip with me, was one of these people. Todd's new to the channel. Glad to be here. Kevin's helping me take back the outdoors a little bit. So We never really did close the loop on that discussion in the trip video. That's kind of too bad because it would have made a good story. Um, but for Todd, that canoe trip was largely about getting over his fears of uh, being out in the backcountry. So with this video, what I want to do is explore some facts about bears and bear behavior and understand better why bears choose to attack. Uh, it's important to remember though that bears, like humans, are all individuals and they are unpredictable. So even though there are some generally understood trends out there about bear behavior, there are always exceptions. So first let's talk about black bears and grizzly bears and how to know the difference between both species. Uh, these bears do behave differently and their ranges overlap, so it's really important to know the difference between the species. Now brown bears or grizzly bears as their name suggests are usually brown and black bears again as their name suggests are usually black but that's not always the case. Black bears have a wide array of color variation. Some black bears are very brown and others are cream colored or uh, actually very white. So it's good to be aware of other distinguishing features. Brown bears have a very large prominent hump on their shoulder whereas black bears do not. Black bears have very prominent ears and uh, stick up quite proudly, whereas grizzly bears have small rounded ears. Black bears have a very low sloped forehead and, and a pointy head, whereas grizzly bears have a very prominent flat forehead. And black bears have short dark claws, while grizzlies have long light colored claws. Grizzly bears are found in the northwest corner of North America. Black bears are found more broadly. They uh, range right across uh, northern North America and overlap significantly with grizzly bears. They're found right across Canada and uh, as far south as Mexico. And we shouldn't forget about polar bears that are located in the most northerly part of uh, North America. So bear behavior also changes with age and sex. Um, so I also think of bears coming in three different types. There's yearlings. There's mothers or sows with cubs, and there's the mature lone males. The yearlings um, get pushed away from their mother by about uh, a year and a half old, and they're out looking for new territory, looking for food. They're generally getting pushed around by other bears that, that have established territories. So they're, they're nomads, they're out there trying to find their way, um, and quite often they get themselves into trouble. So mothers or sows with cubs are uh, 
out trying to feed as well, but their first priority is the protection of their cubs. So they can become aggressive um, if their cubs are threatened. And that old adage of don't get between a mother and her cubs is, is very true. The last category of bears I think of are the, are the lone males. They're usually larger, um, they're usually solitary, and they are usually trying to avoid you. All these types of bears are uh, very focused on eating and trying to gain weight for that winter and the long hibernation that comes with it. In preparing for this video, I took a look at all the human fatalities caused by bear attacks in North America since 2010. What I found was that uh, most of the grizzly bear attacks occurred in very remote areas, uh, usually people working deep in the forest or people uh, doing backpacking and hiking uh, deep in backcountry areas. Since 2010, 15 people have been killed by grizzly bear attacks in North America. Seven of those occurred in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Since 2010, black bears have been responsible for the deaths of eight people in North America. Most of these attacks did occur in remote backcountry areas, however, uh, some did not. For example, the one in Arizona occurred at a country club. So let's talk about different types of bear encounters. Uh, the first one is what I call the non-encounter. That's when uh, the bear uh, is alerted to your presence before you even know it's around and it takes off and leaves you alone. That's the best type and uh, probably occurs the most frequently. The next uh, type of encounter is the non-attack or peaceful bear encounter. Here's a few examples. Okay, bear. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Hi bear. Thank you bear. So in this first example the people did a great job. They uh, they remained calm number one. They spoke with the bear. They communicated softly and gently. They let the bear know where they were and they moved away slowly to let the bear have the trail. I don't want to use my bear spray. That's a good boy. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Keep going. <clears throat> That's a good boy. Look at you go. In this example, the guy did a very similar job as the first couple. He, number one, remained calm, did not run. He spoke and communicated with the bear, but uh, even better, he had his bear spray out and was ready to use it. I need you guys to go, okay? I need you to go. Thank you. I gotta go to work. Hope you enjoyed my yard. Have a good day. So I really like that clip. It's kind of cute. Um, the guy uh, obviously lives in a rural area like I do in bear country and I often get bears in my yard and usually just talking to them is all it takes to make them move on. Um, this guy though, you know, they are black bears and uh, my suggestion would be to be a little more aggressive with black bears. Hey. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hey. 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 I'm going to shoot you. Hey. Knock it off. So in this last clip, you're seeing a hunter uh, have an encounter with a mother and cubs, a very classic scenario. It shows a couple of things. One, that mothers uh, are very aggressive when they try and protect their young, um, but they often, especially black bears, often don't follow through with an attack. They, they may charge and uh, try and set you back and establish some boundaries, but they, they don't always attack. And again, here's an example of communicating with the bear. In this case, he took a little bit of time uh, before he started shouting at the bear. And I think, in my opinion, that gave the mother a little bit of leeway and uh, opened the door for her to, to charge him. Uh, once he started yelling at her, she put the cubs up the tree and uh, she backed off. So my advice with black bears is to challenge them and be loud. Be loud right off the bat. So in these encounters, you're likely going to notice that the bear is stressed. Um, that's evident by an open mouth. You might hear some snorting or grunting. The bear may be chomping at its mouth. It may, it may do a, a, a bluff charge. Those are all indications that you're putting stress on the animal and it's, uh, it's nervous. 
Another type of bear encounter is what I call the habituated bear encounter. This is with a bear that has gotten used to humans. Habituated bears are often uh, synonymous with nuisance bears. They've, they've gotten used to food and uh, a free lunch, so to speak. Many of these bears have learned behaviors that allow them to intermingle with humans. Uh, they're nocturnal, so they probably prowl around at night, getting into garbage um, and, and hiding during the day. You will likely be able to scare off a habituated bear um, in the short term anyway, but they're likely to return because they've gotten used to that food. Unfortunately, even though they can appear cute and uh, non-threatening um, for a while, those bears usually end up causing trouble at some point later in their life. Often these bears aren't really dangerous, um, but you have to remember they can turn on you at any time. So another type of encounter is what I call the defensive attack encounter. This is when a bear actually attacks someone, but they're not seeing them as prey. They're just trying to uh, attack as a form of defense. Grizzly or brown bears especially will, will often attack when they're startled. Um, that likely comes in the form of a charge. They usually make one strong hit on you somehow and then they, they leave. So that's what's happening here. The mountain biker is moving through the forest really quickly and uh, startles a brown bear who charges. Bears have also been known to make defensive attacks in the protection of a kill that they've made or to steal a kill from some other animal or a hunter. And sows or, or mothers with cubs will often make defensive attacks to protect their cubs. Um, so you do not want to position yourself where you may appear to be threatening to cubs. So this usually isn't the case with black bears, but grizzly bears are so big and strong that uh, their defensive attacks can sometimes be fatal. So the last type of bear encounter I have is the predatory bear encounter. This is likely the most rare, but it's the most dangerous. This is when a bear sees you as its prey and uh, decides it's going to take you down. So I took a look at the list of bear attacks that led to human fatalities and all of the black bear attacks that led to fatalities were, were determined to be clearly predatory attacks or probably predatory attacks. So basically black bears, when they do kill somebody, um, it's because they're looking for a meal. Grizzly bears do make predatory attacks on people, um, but like I said before, their defensive attacks can actually kill. So it's not clear always if the bear was trying to kill you for food or killed you by accident. Grizzly bears clearly do occasionally make predatory attacks on people, um, but often there's some sort of a stress related to the bear that contributed to uh, that attack. Unfortunately, in 2018, uh, a woman who was living in the Yukon, her and her daughter were killed by a grizzly bear, and it was clearly a predatory attack. But there were some contributing circumstances to this attack. The bear was emaciated, it was very, very hungry, and it had clearly eaten a porcupine, and that had damaged the uh, lining of its stomach and, and made it hard for it to feed. So it was the stress and desperation of that bear that led to a predatory attack. Now that doesn't seem to be the case with black bears. Most of the black bears that uh, cause predatory attacks are actually found to be quite healthy. So both black bears and grizzly bears make predatory attacks on humans. It happens. So in doing the research for this video, I found something that challenged my thinking a little bit. Um, the classic adage is that a mother and cubs will just make a defensive attack and uh, be on their way. And I think that's probably true with a black bear. So of the last 15 bear attacks that led to fatalities on humans in North America, eight of those 15 attacks were by a mother and cubs. So as you might have guessed, a number of these attacks were determined to be defensive attacks that uh, turned out to be fatal to, to the human. What I was really surprised to see in the, in the data was that two of those eight attacks um, of sows and cubs on humans were, were not defensive at all. They were actually ruled to be predatory attacks. So were these healthy animals uh, that attacked humans or was there some sort of stress involved that led to the attack? I don't know. Uh, it's not clear from looking at the evidence uh, what the motivations were. So what's different in the behavior uh, of a predatory attack? Well, you're going to get all those same stresses before, the, the grunting, the snorting, uh, the chomping of the mouth, but you're also going to get a stalking behavior. Um, they're going to, the bears will stand and display strength. Uh, they're constantly advancing and probing you. They're trying to circle, go around you, um, maybe get you to trip, look for some sort of advantage. And of course, they may simply charge. So this bear isn't bluff charging. He's trying to get around the people 
Um, he's looking for an opportunity. He's trying to get them in the back of the leg or create a trip or some sort of an opportunity so he can continue the attack. And here's the example of uh, showing some strength by uh, pulling branches off a tree or climbing up a tree a little bit. But he continues the attack. He's not He's not going up the tree to get away. He's going up the tree to uh, show a display of strength. Same thing here. So now let's talk about those first two clips I showed you at the beginning of this video. Uh, what was going on that led to those different bear behaviors? In the first clip, the bear, the bear was clearly habituated. Um, I would describe it as a rural bear and not a wilderness bear. Otherwise, it would have it would have moved on. The bear was showing signs of stress, but it clearly had learned behaviors that fit in with its rural environment. Uh, there was lots of food around, and the bear was quite fat and quite content. And it, uh, despite the stresses it was showing, it tolerated this woman being close. So in that second clip where the hunter uh, was attacked by a bear, uh, the environment is clearly more remote. Uh, the guy's out hunting, it's clearly a boreal forest. I would say that's uh, more of a wilderness bear, a more wild bear and uh, its behaviors are probably a little more natural. Now it's not clear from the video what motivated the attack. There, there could have been some cubs nearby. Uh, the bear could have been protecting some sort of a kill that it had made, um, or maybe, and more likely, the hunter just startled it and it, it charged. Uh, but in any scenario, this was clearly a defensive attack. The bear went after the hunter, charged it, knocked the hunter down and uh, did not pursue uh, attacking the, the, the hunter further, it, it left. So that was a lot of information, a lot of scenarios to think about and talk about. Um, so let's review a strategy though of uh, things you can do uh, to help keep you safe if in a bear encounter. So number one, I recommend always carrying bear spray when you're in the back country. Um, that has been proven to be very, very effective at uh, saving human life in a, in a bear attack. Another thing you can do is travel in groups. Bear attacks rarely happen. Uh, in groups of more than two and so uh, even a small group of people uh, stands a greater chance of avoiding a bear attack altogether. And if you can, you never want to startle or surprise a bear. So if you do encounter a bear, what are some things you can do? Uh, number one, do not run. Uh, if you run from a bear, the bear is very likely going to see you as prey and it, it will go after you. Uh, and bears can run faster than you, so don't run. Stay still and try and remain calm. Number two, get your bear spray out, have it ready, and know how to use it. Bear spray has been proven to be the most effective deterrent in bear attacks. So in all situations, you want to communicate with that bear as best you can. You want to talk to it, let it know where you are. If it's a, a grizzly bear, you want to be calm uh, and just let it know where you are and hopefully it'll move off or you can move away slowly. If it's a black bear, uh, sometimes calming words uh, help, but in the case of a black bear, I would recommend being more loud and assertive and trying to scare that bear away. Um, in both cases, if the bear moves away slowly and gives you some space, that's great. Otherwise, you can try and uh, move away slowly and carefully and get out of the situation. And mostly that's all that it takes. Uh, most encounters with a bear are like that. Um, there's some, uh, some communication and one or both parties moves away. So if a bear does charge at you, then it's time to use the bear spray and uh, spray that bear in the face with the bear spray as best you can. So remember that a charging bear is usually uh, a form of a defensive attack. Unfortunately, grizzly bears uh, are very strong and can kill you with a defensive attack. Uh, they may not be trying to eat you, but uh, they can kill you. So the strategy for a grizzly bear when you get charged is uh, to use that spray if you can. But if they do make contact with you, go down, protect your neck, protect your vital organs and um, try and play dead. Um, a lot of people have survived that kind of an attack. If it's a black bear uh, and it charges at you, I recommend uh, fighting it to your best ability. Do not play dead with a black bear. Um, when a black bear uh, attacks, it's looking for a meal. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you uh, feel more comfortable and more prepared for a bear encounter in the back country. Um, if you're looking for a deeper dive in the subject, though, I've, I recommend a book. This is uh, Bear Attacks, Their Causes and Avoidance by Stephen Herrero. It's the classic. It's the one to get if you want to understand uh, bears and bear behavior. I'll put a link to where you can find that book down below in the description as well. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I hope you stay safe in bear country. As always, have a great day.